Hey, it's Bernie Dog here, looking at the British Military Number no. 2 stove. Mine came not in great shape and with a lot of goopy old military paint, so I stripped it with some chemical stripper, citrus strip, and then cleaned it up with some bead blasting, and cleaned up all the badging, and made sure that everything was working really well with the burner, too, before reassembling. But I want to show you something else I did, too. Now these stoves only have two speeds, on or off, and they come with a very small brass knob which gets hotter than all get out when you have to turn it on or off. So I decided to make my own little brass um, fake knob that would go on there that would protect my delicate little pinkies from being burned by that knob. I took a piece of brass and drilled some holes, machined it, put some stainless steel rods in there that would connect with the uh, the actual real knob and then used an appliance knob on the other end which threaded into my brass knob. So let's take a look at this stove. This is how it, it looks now. Just give you the experience of what it looks like and how it opens up. So to open the stove, you slide the one leg over and you have to push in or pull, uh, pull out on the leg to disengage the pin that's holding it in place. And to get it to lock in, you can see it locked in. This one is easier to see. Just pull down on the leg. Yep. And then when you pull out on it, it'll spring outward and lock into that pin. Now one of the things I did is I made some Delrin discs that fit in here that protect the paint a little better and just make everything work more smoothly. Just turn those on the lathe. They're just thin Delrin. So we open the lid and there's a locking piece, that one there, and then you open the flap and the locking piece will swing down and rest on the edge of the stove and support the wind flap. And that's the uh, grate, and you have to flip it over for use. The drawer comes open, and now you can get at the pump and also get at the fuel tank. And you just go ahead and put your grate back in ready for cooking. Now here's my little knob extension I was showing you I made. And you can see it just fits right on there, and now you don't have to worry about burning your fingers. Now my stove only came with one of the legs, so rather than try to match a new leg to that leg, I made two brand new legs, reproduction legs, which you see on the stove. Also, my stove didn't come with the tool set, which should look like this and should be mounted on that wind flap. I don't have any. Hey, if anybody's got any, you're welcome to send me an email to the email address in the description box. I'd be happy to talk to you about purchasing some. So let's take a look at some other features of the stove. This stove has a tube style vaporizer and a fuel tank with a safety release valve in the cap. It also has a locking pump knob. So let's fire it up. Now one thing about this stove is it's either on or off. I think I mentioned that before. There is no adjustment of the flame. There's no simmer from this stove. We're going to go ahead and preheat it here with denatured alcohol. And after a couple of minutes of waiting, which I've cut out of this video, we can go ahead and start it up. This stove should be run on Coleman fuel or other high quality naphtha based camping stove fuel. Don't use kerosene in here, it won't do a good job. Now these stoves are basically designed to boil water for tea for the British Army. And because of the vaporizer design and the on-off valve, once you turn them off, it takes a while for the vapor and fuel to clear the vaporizing tube inside the, the burner there. And that's about it for this stove. Thanks for watching. Please link, like, and subscribe. Check in next time for the next video.